What's up, everybody, and welcome to my very first Commander deck opening. I'm very much a noob in Magic the Gathering. I've been playing a little bit of Arena online, trying to learn more of the cards and everything, but I figured, you know what, I kind of want to get into it, and what better than with the Fallout Commander deck? Of course, we've got Dog Meat on the cover here. I've watched a few other videos of people actually opening these packs. I, I know these are pre-selected cards, so you can technically find a list online that has every single card in this pack, but I figured I would do this as a test, see whatever feedback I get. I did buy my first uh, set booster, which is a little bit of an older one. There's one for Baldur's Gate. Uh, I saw some videos on that too, so at some point I'll do a video opening that, but yeah, I've kind of been influenced a little bit on uh, opening my first Commander deck, so that's why we're here today. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Pay Money Wubby and Shroud. Both of them were doing some pack openings, uh, and, well, Pay Money Wubby does more of an alpha opening. Uh, alpha decks, seeing what he can pull from those, and then he uh, auctions them off to chat a lot of times, which is cool. But yeah, um... Like I said, this is, I'm a complete noob, so keep your expectations in line. I'm literally just going through this uh, to kind of appreciate the cards, see what's here, see what's in this deck, um, and then at some point I, I will be playing them. I uh, probably will play some standard before I get back into, or get into Commander and everything, but just to kind of get a feel for it, but for now... I guess we'll, uh, let's crack this thing open, see what we got. We've got Scrappy Survivors, the red, green, and a um, light deck. So, see what we got here. There's going to be raw, no edits, anything. Uh, one of the videos that I watched so far opening a different deck suggested opening it by the bottom here. So, I'm going to do that slowly. I'm going to try to be as gentle as possible here. All right, so with everything in there. I'm just gonna put that off to the side. Got this. Oh, stuff falling out the bottom already. Grab the deck here. Put that there. By the way, I'm trying not to hit my uh, camera or anything. So I saw this typically comes with punch out cards. I had no idea what this looked like underneath the commander deck packaging at first. But uh, after watching a few videos of some different ones, I didn't watch this one actually get open. I've watched different Fallout packs. They got Punch Outs right here. Also got still that's the cover. You got Vault Boy chilling there. Cool. Some more on the back there. So I'll definitely hold on to that. All right. What's all the good stuff that we got here? So I believe this is the information on the deck. Scrappy Survivors. Scrappy Survivors. Playing the deck. Surviving the Wasteland is more fun with friends. With Dogmeat ever loyal as your commander, you can dig around the aura and equipment cards in your graveyard to suit up your creatures. The more weapons and gear you carry, the better, and you'll pick up a junk pile for all scavenging. Junk tokens are artifacts that will allow you to exile the top card at the library. Cast it to turn. Cast it that turn. Use it or lose it. Preston Garvey. Oh, no. Another, set another settlement needs your help. Minutemen is another steadfast option to helm your deck. He creates auras that enchant your lands and allows you to untap your enchanted permanence, keeping your you ahead on mana and protected by your creatures. Look it out there, Vault Dweller. Or settlement needs your help. Oh, God. Flashbacks. All right, then there's all the rules. I will definitely be looking over that once I play my first game of Commander. And then on this side... Look at that. See, I'm I'm a big dog fan. I have a German Shepherd Husky and a Corgi. So I had to go with the dog meat uh commander deck as my very first one. Okay, cool. And it shows magic colors down here. Why are dog meat and Preston Garvey red, green, and white? Dog meat embodies red, green, and white for his unwavering loyalty, love, and fierce protection. Preston's heroic commitment to justice and defense of his community also places him in this that's cool 
I never realized that they put like a whole explanation on why and the lore behind it and all of that. So yeah, that's cool. All right, let's get uh, to the next step. I'll just put this to the side here, right there. Yeah, speaking of dogs, by the way, uh, I tried cleaning up. This is where my, my key, that's actually my keyboard right there. So I cleaned up this whole area. Uh, this is the deck box, I believe. Pop it. Yeah, I didn't know that they came with these too. Pretty cool. Being able to just put all your decks or cards into this. I bought some sleeves too, so that way it can be put together. There we go. I like that. That's so cute. <laughs> all right. Let's get to the good stuff. So... This is your life counter. All right. Got that. Looks pretty cool. It's very similar. I mean, same exact uh, artwork. Both of those. And then I think this is where it has the collector booster sample pack. This is the big one. Now, I don't know how many are actually in this. I watched Shroud open a ton of these, which... Man, it's crazy how expensive, like, the actual booster packs, like, 600 bucks, I think, for one. Uh, I, I'm not at that point, no. I'm going in as cheap as possible currently, just to enjoy it as much as I can. Uh, and, and really, my biggest thing with Magic for myself is I'm going to only buy the things that I'm genuinely interested. I know that Modern Horizon 3 is the big one right now. But there's an Assassin's Creed one coming up. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. So we'll definitely be doing, I'll be doing some videos on that. Uh, this is all a test trial, but we'll see. See what happens. So we got an ad card. First one, Rose. Cutthroat Raider. Okay. First strike. At the end of combat on your turn, if you attack this turn, create a junk token for each opponent you attack. Whenever you sacrifice a junk, add. Okay. That's pretty cool. And Mystic Forge. Checking out how good the focus is on this. I look at the top card of your library, so. But these are pretty cool. Nothing crazy. It was fun. All right, let's see what we got inside the actual deck. Dog meat ever loyal. I don't know how long this... I'm going to try not to drag this video out like super long. Because I don't know. I, I can't really give a ton of valuable feedback on all these cards yet. Since I'm still very early on. But either way, I figured it would be something fun to try. A little nervous because I don't, I don't know how in depth the magic community gets but that's okay so this one's a little bit of a thicker card this is the one for display dog meat ever loyal when dog meat enters the battlefield mill five cards then return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped to text create a junk token so it's all about creating junk tokens pretty much yeah it's pretty cool out there this thing is when these on display put that right there i think all of these are what junk tokens yeah settlement tokens radiation at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase if you have any rad counters mill that many cards for each non-land card milled this way you lose one life and a rad counter oh boy more cards and a how to play. Yeah, I had to learn all about like standard booster draft commander. Oh, it's been a learning experience, but it's been cool. Last night I watched uh, Moist Critical and Pay Money Wubby during the, do their entire commander deck uh, or commander play, like let's play, I guess you could say, with like two other guys, like four of them. It was pretty cool. All right, so we got dog meat right here. First one, I don't know. Let me actually split this deck. Grabbing all of them at once. 
applied. All right, let's see. So there's dog meat again. Put that right there. Then Preston Garvey. So I guess, um, and I, I didn't know this actually. So my thought process was for commander decks, you only get like one legendary creature already dropping the card. Yeah, okay, I landed on my lap. Um, oh, it's a hollow too. Okay. It's so hard to see that icon. So what, that's considered a mythic? Yeah, looks like it. Mythic hollow, mythic hollow. I'm still learning that part too, like common, uncommon, rare, mythic. So that's pretty cool. But I, uh, anyways, back to what I was saying, I never knew that both uh, commander decks came with like two legendary creatures that you could use. So you could either use dog meat as your commander or you could use Preston Garvey, which is cool. Um, that I uh, like how you can like mix and match and do that. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a green R enchantment token named Settlement attached to it to up to one target and land you control. It has enchant land and enchanted land has tap one add one mana any color. Whenever Preston Garvey Miniman attacks, untap each enchanted permanent you control. Okay. Pretty cool. Alright, so we got Brotherhood Outcast. By the way, for anybody that's like just joining uh, for this uh, magic opening, like you've never seen any other videos, I typically do Let's Plays, and we just did an entire Let's Play of all the Fallout games. New Vegas, uh, we started with three, went to New Vegas, then we did four, and then we played a bit of 76, which now I'm starting to do videos on 76. But pretty cool. That's another reason why I wanted to do this. Commander Sophia Crash Landing. Second, let me. Again, tons of notifications. Phone to get tracked by anything. All right, there we go. That's what I'm using right now. I've got my phone propped up, and that's why you can see this. Sorry. See this little thing here, but all right. Now that I pointed that out, you probably won't be able to unsee it, but my apologies. Acquired Mutation. Crimson Cavanier. Ian the Reckless. Big Horner Rancher. The Creature Human Ranger of Vigilance. Okay. Breakdown. Cool. Super Mutant. Destroy target token or target artifact or enchantment. Create a junk token. Yeah, you can tell it's really all about creating junk tokens or creating um, settlements. So, Gunner Conscript. Super Mutant Scavenger. Well rested. Nice. That's a good buff. Enchant Enchanted creature has whenever this creature becomes untapped, put two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Then you gain two life and draw a card. The ability triggers only once each turn. Okay. Now I'm, I'm kind of just like whichever ones kind of stick out to me, those are the ones I'm, I'm reading because I could sit here and read every single one all day. And I mean, what? We're already 13 minutes into this video. We'd probably make this like a 45. If that's what you guys want, let me know. I mean, I can do that. But I just don't know how well this will resonate first, first time. So, uh, and we're still learning. So, there's that. Agility Bobblehead. Add one mana of any color. Okay. Up to X target creatures you control. Each gain haste until the end of the turn and can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste where X is the number of bobbleheads you control as you activate this ability. Jeez. Perception bobblehead. Okay. Same thing. Silver shroud costume. Flash. When silver shroud costume enters the battlefield, attach it to a target creature you control. That creature gains shroud until end of turn. Okay. All that glitters. Path to exile. Together. Exile target creature. Its controller may search their library for a basic land. 
Put that card onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. Valorous stance. Sticky fingers. An aura. Enchantment aura. What's that one called? Abundant growth. Fertile ground. Rancor. It's a very, like, slippery. <laughs> yeah. Trying to keep them together, but then they just slide. Play the... <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel's Nest. Okay, these are all enchantment lands, artifacts, behemoth sledge, equipment, arcane signet, brass knuckles, blur scope, fire shrieker, got a flamer, crypto preacher, uh, creature has double strike, soul ring, Codsworth handy helper. Legendary artifact creature. Commanders you control have ward two. All right. Keep, uh, if I move my hand out the way, it bumps it sometimes. Trying to keep an eye on it. Idolized. Pre war formal wear. When pre war formal wear enters the battlefield, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Attach pre war formal wear to it. Vault 101 Birthday Party. Enchantment Saga. So it's like cards like these where I would get like really confused and have to look into like how exactly this works. I know I understand everything with like casting each card or like entering the battlefield with each card. Um, some of the phrases I'm still learning a lot of too, but yeah, this is definitely one of the ones I right now, like if I was about to play it, I'm assuming you'd start with this, but I don't know how you would do two and three. Um, two token is an artifact with two. Sacrifice this artifact, you gain three life. Okay, that's cool. Duchess, the wayward tavern keep. Hunters for hire. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a quest counter on it. Remove a quest counter from the permanent you control. Create a junk token. Okay. Grim Reaper Sprint. Junk Jet. Megaton's Fate. Oh no. <laughs> Choose one disarm. Oh, that's cool. See, it's stuff like that that I think is so cool. Sorcery. Disarm. Destroy target artifact. Create four treasure tokens. Detonate. Megaton's Fate deals 8 damage to each creature. Each player gets 4 rad counters. Huh. Do the right thing or the wrong thing. Vault 21 House Gambit. Start a card, then draw a card. Reveal up to 5 non-land cards from your hand for each of those cards that has the same mana value as another card revealed this way. Create a treasure token. Okay, that's the first part. See what we got for the next one. Um, by the way, I did get one other commander deck, so we'll be doing that one too. I'm thinking about posting most of these like magic videos on Monday. Uh, kind of similar to like I said earlier, pay money what be he does magic Monday. I was like, you know what? I feel like that's a perfect cadence. So uh me being a very tiny creator, I'm gonna do my own thing on Mondays. So Veronica Dissident Scribe. Whenever Veronica Dissident Scribe attacks, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Let me know how the distance is. Like, honestly, if you guys have any feedback, if this is, like, too close, too far, you want me to zoom in, you want me to get further away, um, feel free to, to let me know because, like I said, first time trial here, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm kind of just appreciating the cards. and reading over them as they uh as i as i feel like it so animal friend the great perk right there enchanted creature has whenever this creature attacks create a one one green squirrel token uh creature token put a counter on that token for each aura and equipment attached to this creature other than animal strong back classic uh, equip abilities, you activate the target enchanted creature costs three less to activate. Okay. Almost perfect. 
Armor E Paladin. Human Knight. That's pretty sick. Trample. See, that's something I would have to... I'm not sure what Trample does, but... Whenever you cast an aura or equipment spell, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until the end of your next turn. Eight. Cage Brawler. Okay. I'm familiar with this one. Uh, this is one of the cards that in that Moist Critical and Pay Money Wubby uh, Commander deck, one of the guys used eight, and it was pretty much fisty cuffs the entire game. Um, but it was pretty cool. It's uh, it's definitely one of the cards that I was familiar with for a bit there. Put two two counters on Kate if discarded the card with the highest mana value among these those cards tied for the highest. Cass, Hand of Vengeance. I never got to play with Cass in, uh, I think she was Fallout 3. Vigilance. Remember Cass or another creature you control dies? If it was enchanted or equipped, return any number of R cards that were attached to it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Attach to target creature. Then attach any number of equipment that were attached to that creature. Jeez, there's a lot of attachment there. Inventory management. Oh no. What second? As long as this spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. For each aura and equipment you control, you may attach it to a creature control. Moira Brown. God, her the guide. When Moira Brown, guide author, enters the battlefield, create a colorless equipment artifact token named Wasteland Survival Guide. With equipped and creature gets plus one, plus one for each. Quest counter among permanents you control, equip one. Okay. Three dog, Galaxy News DJ. Whenever you attack, you may pay two and sacrifice an aura attached to the three dog, Galaxy News DJ. When you sacrifice an aura this way for each other attack, second creature you control, create a token that's a copy of the aura attached that creature mr gutsy okay there we go artifact creature whenever you cast an aura plus one plus one on mr gutsy that sounds like it's pretty good especially if this deck has a lot of auras in it um when mr gutsy dies create x junk tokens where x is the number of counters on it cool hit boy 3000 it's getting out of focus here. Junk down. I think we might be getting to land sections. Okay. Oh no. We still got a lot more. Sunscorch divide. Mantle of ancients. Chapman aura. The mantle of ancients enters the battlefield. Return any number of target aura and or equipment cards that could be attached to enchanted creature from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to the creature. Your steel paladin. Whenever an equipment enters your battlefield under the you control, under your control, you may draw a card. Okay. Single combat sorcery. Each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control, then sacrifices the rest. Players can't cast creature or planeswalker spells until the end of your next turn. Blasphemous Act. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Black blas Blasphemous Act deals 13 damage to each creature. That's one of the cards I saw played in the uh, commander playthrough yesterday. Chaos Warp. Heroic Intervention. We got um, Nick Valentine in there. Permanent, permanents you control gain Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. That sounds pretty good. Basilisk Collar. Equip creature as Death Touch and Lifelink. Ooh. Bloodforged Battle Axe. Champion's Helm, Masterwork of Ingenuity. Yeah, a lot of these cards too, like I, I know you can look up the deck and everything beforehand and see what's actually in here, but I, like I said, I didn't do that at all. 
So this is all just me seeing what's actually in here and going from there. All right, I think now we might be at the land section. All right, I'm just gonna take a little, little peek. Okay, Guys, so these are all like special land. And then we get to base. Okay, I see, I see. We'll look through these. Canopy Vista, Cinder Glade. I know I'm kind of off to the side here. This is like a very small area. Cliff Top Retreat. Exotic Orchard. Add one mana of any color that a land that a land an opponent controls could produce. Okay. Huh. Mossfire Valley. Is that the pit right there? Looks like it. Yeah. Pit. I always thought that was cool. That was such a good expansion in uh, Fallout 3. And then same thing with uh, going back to it in 76, which is pretty cool. Rootbound Craig. Craig. Scattered Groves. Sacrifice the Desert. Exile all graveyards. Jeez. That's, uh, that seems kind of crazy. Because then you wouldn't have, like, you wouldn't be able to pull anything from your discard graveyard. Sheltered Thicket. Sungrass Prairie. Sunpetal Grove. Temple of Abandon. It enters tap. When Temple of Abandon enters the battlefield, scribe one. Temple of Plenty. Temple of Triumph. Swift Foot Boots. Ash Barrens. Buried Ruins. Command Tower. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Evolving Wilds. Jungle Shrine. Path of Ancestry. That, that's still a... It's interesting how these, some of these are considered land still. These all together. Roadside Reliquary. Rogue's Passage. Temple of the False God. That one sounds cool. Let me look at it. Activate only if you control five or more land. Aeromorphic Expanse. And then mountain. Okay, so now we're getting to basics. Mountain, mountain. They got the, some have different artwork. Cool. Forest, forest, forest. Plains, 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 plains. Cool. I should feel like I should have did a different deck, but I mean, honestly, these all would get shuffled in anyways. So it's not. I, I mean, like I should have uh, separated these once we hit the. The land that's what i meant by different deck but yeah um i think is that everything crazy how fast you can get like that many cards a hundred cards in a deck with all the junk tokens again i don't know do we look at these settlement settlement treasure food and then the radiation ones learn to play magic on your turn. Definitely gonna keep in these keep these close whenever I play Commander for the first time. But this is pretty cool. One thing I, I've been wanting to do for a bit now, and I say, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So um if you guys did end up enjoying this, definitely leave a like on the video. It helps out a whole lot and uh lets me know if I should keep doing these because I've I've been playing board games back in like 2020. I bought a ton of board games and played with family since we were locked in and we couldn't really go places. So uh, I, I've bought a, a good amount now. Uh, and at some point, maybe since we're Cassus Plays or since I'm Cassus Plays, who's to say we don't play some board games at some point too. So for now, I think that's going to be it for this one. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. And if you got any suggestions, Feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.